Good morning. We'll start today using two blocks if you have them. If you don't, I'll give you an option. So if you have two blocks, you'll take your blocks, you'll sit facing away from them. So you'll put one block behind you on the medium height and the other block behind that one on the tallest height. You want some space here. You can always just move it to wherever you need it to be. But now you'll turn away. So you're seated, feet on the mat, come down onto your forearms. And this first block will touch down somewhere on your back. You want it to go so that it's definitely supporting the bottom tips of your shoulder blades, which is a lot lower than you think for most of us. And then use the hands to move the other block so that the head can rest on the block. And you want to make sure the block is totally flat on the mat underneath you. Sometimes I'll see in person where the block's tipping and it's on the corner edge and you want to avoid that. Then once you have that set up, arms can come down by the sides and now you're in a supported back bend. If you only have one block, take supported bridge. It's still a back bend. You'll just bring the block underneath the hips, head down on the mat. And if you're coming into that, you start with the head and back on the mat block off to the side, walk the feet in, press into the feet, lift the hips up. That's when you put the block underneath the hips and you just rest the hips there. But if you're in this supported back bend with the block underneath the thoracic spine, lifting and spreading the chest and the other block with the head, stay here, soles of the feet on the mat, still arms down by the sides, palms can face up. Close the eyes, or you can keep them softly open if that feels better for you today. Just kind of looking down the bridge of the nose. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Back out through the mouth. Two more like that. Deep breath in. Exhale back out through the mouth. Inhale in through the nose, back out through the mouth. This time in through the nose, back out through the nose. Keep going with your Ujjayi breath, moving the breath up and down the back of the throat, in and out through the nose. If you have the feet on the mat, you could extend the legs out in front of you. That deepens the back bend. If it feels like it's too intense, then just walk the feet back so they're on the mat. Legs can be relaxed. You don't really need to do anything. If you're in the same supported back bend that I'm in and the chest and the head are lifted, you can reach the arms back overhead. They won't touch anything. You're just finding a stretch. Keeping that lower back long so... Tail's going forward toward the feet. Chest is still lifting and spreading. There's a nice arch in the spine. Then bring the arms out wide in a T-shape down by the legs. And on the inhale, reach the arms straight up toward the ceiling, back overhead. Exhale, arms come out wide, down by the legs. Inhale, we lift the arms up and overhead, keep going, follow your breath. This is a nice way to open up the shoulders without putting any weight on them, getting some movement. If you're in supported bridge, you're skipping this. Next time the arms reach up overhead, stay there, just pause. Bring the arms back up toward the sky, down by the legs. Inhale, uh, inhale reach the arms out wide in a T-shape. Arms up overhead. Exhale, 
lift the arms up toward the sky, down by the legs. We inhale to open the arms, reach them up overhead. Keep going in this direction with your circles. So same thing, just going the other way, which may or may not feel different in your body. One more circle all the way around. Take your time with it. Once the arms come down by the legs, bring the forearms down to the mat. So forearms and hands down to the mat, lift the head up first. Then you can start to bring the hands to the mat and lift yourself all the way up off of the blocks. Set the blocks off to the side so they're off of the mat. Come on down onto your back again. So you're just lying flat the way you would for Shavasana, resting, but also bringing your attention and awareness to your back, feeling what's different. You might still feel the back bend in the body. And this is a nice way to just lie flat, flat and feel the work that you did. Walk the feet in, soles of the feet to the mat. If you're in bridge pose, set that block off to the side. You're on your back too. And then we'll all hug the right knee in toward the chest. Leave that left foot where it is on the mat, just so we can bring some width to the lower back. You can extend that left leg forward. Heel resting down on the mat, toes pointing up. Right arm reaches out to the right, bring this right knee over maybe a third of the way. So not all the way over. It's a light twist. Keep that right shoulder on the mat. You could look over the right arm if your neck is okay with it, but this right leg is floating. It's up high. You're just gently kind of leaning over to the left with the legs and reaching over with the upper body, the chest and the right arm to the right. And you'll come back to center, right foot comes down to the mat, hug the left knee in toward the chest, stay here. Extend the right leg forward, heel resting down on the mat, hang onto the left knee with the right hand, left arm reaches out to the left, left knee crosses over the body, maybe a third of the way, maybe less. Just start to move the legs away from the chest. So chest goes to the left, legs start to go to the right. It's tempting to go way too far into this. Try not to. Kind of feels good too when you just kind of start it and don't let yourself go all the way in. Back to center, soles of the feet on the mat, interlace the fingers back behind the head, resting the head on the hands. Take an inhale. On the exhale, lift the feet and the head. So bring it in, reverse crunches. Inhale, set everything back down, feet and head. Exhale, curl in. Inhale, feet down, head down. Exhale, lift the legs, lift the head, bring it in. Inhale, set it back down. Exhale, bring it in. Inhale, rest. Exhale, contract. Inhale, rest. Exhale, contract. One more like this. Inhale, rest. Exhale, contract. Hold it. Set the feet down. Keep the head lifted. Reach the arms forward, palms can face down, and we're doing heel touches. So bring the right hand toward the right heel, then switch sides, left hand toward the left heel. You'll go side to side. You're trying to keep the shoulder blades <laughs> lifted away from the mat. One more time each side, right and left. 
Then keep reaching the arms forward, turn the palms to face up, extend the legs forward, maybe hover the feet, hugging the core in. You're in Ardha Navasana. Take it up to Navasana. So look up, point the chest up, hug the core in. You're still reaching the arms forward, chest is lifted. Your back is long. So you're trying to make a V shape with the spine and the thighs. Legs can stay bent. You can straighten them if you really want to, just as long as you can stay out of the hip flexors if you do that. Then set the feet down to the mat, done with those. Uh, let's bring the legs out in front of you. So legs are just straight out in front of you. Bring the sole of the right foot to the mat. Step the right foot over the left leg. Grab onto this outer right ankle bone. Bring the foot over to the left. So you're stacking right knee on top of left. Maybe you shift over to the left hip and bend the bottom leg. You don't have to, it's just an option. You're folding forward either way. Maybe that leg is bent. Maybe it's straight in front of you. Just make sure you're even on the hips on the mat and you don't have anything underneath you start to fold forward over the legs, let the head and the neck go. And this is your first major hip opening. Be gentle with yourself. Don't feel like you have to push it too far. Come back up to seated, bring the hands back behind you, extend the bottom leg if it's bent, then the top leg, come back up to seated. This time left foot comes to the mat, step the left foot over the right leg, grab onto the outer left ankle bone, bring it out to the side, lean over to the right, bend that left leg, see if that's happening. Feet can come in toward the body, they can move away from the body, see what feels good for you right now, make sure you're even on the hips. Start to fold forward over the legs, any mount that works for you. Just right about where you start feeling something in the lower half of the body. And maybe even a nice opening in your spine. Bring it back up to seated hands, come back behind you, extend the bottom leg, then the top leg, leaning back with the hands back behind you, bring the soles of the feet wide to the outer edges of the mat and let the knees go side to side like windshield wipers. So releasing that hip opening. And you'll come to hands and knees. If your blocks moved way back, just move them toward uh, the top of the mat. So they're available if you need them later. Once you come to hands and knees, let's set ourselves up for cat cow. Stack the shoulders over the wrist, hips over the knees. On the inhale, reach the heart forward, lift the tail. On the exhale, round the spine, chin in toward the chest. Keep going on your own. One more cycle. Come back to tabletop. Keep the shoulders stacked right over the wrist. Step the feet back to plank pose, top of a push up. So you want to make sure you're not locking in the joints like the elbows. The elbows, the eye of the elbow turns forward, and there's a tiny little bend, one that you can't see, but one you should be able to feel. And then as you press into the whole hand, fingers are spread evenly. They're not as wide as you can go, but there's definitely space between all of the fingers. So you want a nice big handprint. And then you're really trying to, to press down into that webbing between the index finger and the thumb. 
sometimes called the tiger's eye. Chest is reaching forward. Gaze can look forward and down a little bit. That helps you elongate the front side of the body. Legs are squeezing in. So the muscles are squeezing around the bones. Lift the hips up and back. Downward facing dog. Shoulders back behind the wrists. Hips are lifted up high. Lowest front ribs hug in a little bit. Sometimes there's a tendency to try to bring the rib cage down toward the mat. There is a little bit of that with the heart, but you want the lowest front ribs to hug in because that's what gives you the most length in the spine. You take away length in the spine when you arch the back too much. Then bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, tiptoe the feet up to the hands. So take several small steps as you walk the feet forward to the top of the mat. And then once you get here, heel toe the feet a little bit wider than hip width distance. You can even go to the outer edges of the mat, bend the knees so much that you can rest the chest on the thighs, clasp opposite elbows, let the head and the neck go. So rib cage is on the thighs. There's a connection there. You bend the knees as much as you need to, to make that happen. Switch the grip, other forearm in front. You could work towards straighter legs, but don't lose that connection between the rib cage and the thighs. And you might hardly be able to straighten the legs. Maybe there's still a deep bend there and that's fine. We're just starting out. Then bring the hands down to the mat, come up halfway. You're still keeping the feet wide the way you are. And then exhale, fold, step uh, hands between the feet, step the left foot back behind you. It's a wide lizard lunge. So right hand inside the right, the right foot, set that back knee down, right hand comes to the right hip, open the chest to the right. Right hand comes back down to the mat inside the foot, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, step the left foot outside of the left hand. You're back in that wide-legged forward fold just to switch sides. Right foot steps back, left hand inside the left foot. Bring that right knee down to the mat. You can scoot it as far back as you want. Left hand comes to the left hip, open the chest to the left. So you're getting that twist, hip opening. Right shoulders away from the right ear. Left hand comes back down inside the foot. Back knee lifts, right foot steps outside of the right hand, back in that wider leg forward fold. You can play with straightening the legs, bring the hands in front of the shoulders, heel toe the feet, closer together, more like hip width distance apart. On an inhale, slide the hands up the sides of the legs, reach the heart forward. Exhale, forward fold. Two more like, like that. Inhale up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold. Last one, inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. This time, circle the arms all the way up to standing. Hands come together overhead, down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Stay here, Urdhva Hastasana. Bend the left elbow so you're reaching down the center of the back. Grab onto that left elbow. Just stand tall, working, uh, starting to open up that left shoulder, maybe even the left tricep. chest is lifted, legs are going down toward the mat. So you feel like the abdomen is long. Reach both arms back up. This time we bend the right, the right arm, grab the right elbow, lift the chest up, keep the gaze going forward. That also helps you keep the arm behind the head if it's getting there. 
lowest front ribs in here too. Reach the arms all the way up. Bring the arms down by the sides. Stay standing. Interlace the fingers behind the back. Point the knuckles back. Little bend in the knees. Fold forward over the legs. Coming back into your forward fold with a deeper shoulder opening. So shoulders away from the ears. Knuckles go back behind the head. As much of a bend as you want in the legs. If your legs are getting pretty straight, you want to shift the weight forward into the balls of the feet, lifting the hips up high. Switch the weaving of the fingers, one finger over. Hands come down to the mat. Inhale up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, full. Bend the knees, hands to the mat. Step back to plank pose. Shift forward onto the toes. Bend the elbows halfway, Chaturanga. Cobra or up dog. We started with the deep back bend. You might feel okay for up dog, but I'll leave that up to you. Legs are lifted if you're an upward facing dog. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Hips go up and back. Bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, walk, step, get the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Circle the arms all the way up to standing. Hands come together overhead, down in front of the heart. Surya A, inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhaling up halfway. Exhale, bend the knees, hands come down to the mat, step back to plank pose, lower down halfway chaturanga. Inhale up for your back bend. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, bring the feet up to the hands. Inhale up halfway, exhale fold. Circle the arms all the way up to standing. Hands come together overhead, down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, bend the knees, hands to the mat, step back to plank pose, lower down halfway chaturanga. Inhale up for your back bend. Exhale back, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look to the top of the mat, get the feet up there. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Circle the arms all the way up to standing. Hands come together, down in front of the heart. Last cycle, inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, bend the knees, hands come down to the mat, step back to plank pose, lower down halfway, cobra or up dog, down dog. Right foot steps up between the hands. Set the back knee down gently. Get it as far back as you can. Bring the uh, left hand underneath the left shoulder, right hand to the right hip. Open the chest to the right. Maybe you stay here. You could bend the back leg, reach back, see if the foot's there. Not a big deal if it isn't. Another way to get there is to put a, a block underneath that left hand. You could also bring it all the way up to the tallest height, and then you don't have to reach as far back. 
But if it's not happening, right hand, right hip. So you don't just keep lifting the left foot without any support. Good. Gently release that uh, left foot. Right hand comes back down to the mat. Tuck the back toes. Lift the back knee. Reach the arms alongside the body, hovering the chest low over the front thigh without touching it. Then arms come all the way up. Crescent pose. Back leg is strong. Chest is lifted. Open it up, warrior two. We'll keep this one dynamic. On your inhale, straighten the front leg, bring the palms together overhead. Exhale, back to warrior two. Two more of those. Inhale, reach up, straighten the front leg. Exhale, warrior two. This time, inhale, reach up, straighten the front leg. Turn those right toes in to face the side of the mat. Keep angling them in. Turn the left toes out. Warrior two facing the back of the mat. Right hip pushes the left hip forward. So you can keep the head right over the hips. Chest lifts, legs go down a little bit lower. Flip the front palm up, left palm, reach it up and back, reverse warrior. Open up that left side body. Stay light with the back hand. Then windmill the hands down to the mat. You're coming onto the ball of the back foot. You're still in a lunge facing the back of the mat. Step the left foot back, plank pose. Bring the feet together, move the feet over to the right. So stacking the left foot on top of the right foot. Left arm reaches up, side plank. Maybe you hover the left foot away from the right foot. Try to keep it low though. You could step the left big toe back behind you, reach the left arm up and over the ear, coming into wild thing. So hips lift up. It's the glutes that help you push the hips up. Come back to side plank if you took that variation. Left hand comes down to the mat, downward facing dog. Lift the right leg up and back for three-legged down dog. Step the right foot all the way through, up between the hands, feet uh, hip width distance apart, come up for a crescent pose, facing the back of the mat. Right away, warrior two. Reverse warrior, keep that bend in the front knee as you reach up and back. This time you're already reaching toward the, what was the original top of the mat. You wanna keep that. Turn the right toes to face the side of the mat. Turn the left toes out, left forearm, left thigh, side angle pose back to the front of the mat. So right arm reaching up and over. If you feel like the hips are open enough, you could bring that left hand down outside of the left foot, maybe on a block, chest is reaching up. Drive down through that right leg. Right hand comes down to the mat. You're on the ball, the back foot. Make sure you have enough space. You might need to he heel toe the left foot out to the left. Right foot steps up to meet the left foot. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Bend the knees, sit back, chair pose, Utkatasana. Weights even in the legs, heavier in the heels, toes are light, chest lifts. Come all the way up to standing, hands come together, down in front of the heart. Bring the arms down by the sides, Tadasana Mountain Pose. Find something in front of you to focus on, something eye level. Shift the weight over to the right foot. Can you grab the, back, the top of the left foot? So bending that left knee, see if you can reach back, grab for the foot. Lengthen that left quad down toward the mat. You can keep the right hand on the right hip. Some people like to reach the right arm up. That's up to you, whichever one you think gives you the best balance. And the knees are side by side. 
So it should feel almost like that left inner thigh spinning back behind you. Keep lifting the chest. You can press the left foot into the hand, the hand back into the foot. Then let that left foot come back down to the mat, reach both arms up, bend the knees, sit back, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up, halfway. Exhale, fold, hands to the mat, vinyasa if you want one, on the way back to downward facing dog. Left foot steps up between the hands. Right knee comes down to the mat. Scoot that right knee as far back as you can. You want to try to get above the kneecap. Left hand, left hip. Open the chest to the left. Feel that twist in the spine. Stay here. Or maybe you bend that right foot. Reach back. See if you can uh, connect it with the hand. If not, skip it. Left hand, left hip or a block underneath the right hand, go to the highest height or whatever height makes the most sense and you don't have to reach back as far. Gently let that foot go. Left hand comes back down to the mat outside the foot. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. If you were able to get that back knee pretty far back, you might need to hop that back foot in. Reach the arms back behind you. Chest is reaching forward, almost like you're going to go to warrior three. Then reach the arms forward all the way up, crescent pose. Open it up, warrior two. Inhale, straighten the front leg. Palms come together overhead. Exhale, warrior two. Two more. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reach up. Stay here. Turn the left toes in. Keep angling them in. Turn the right toes out. Warrior two, back of the mat. Left hip pushes that right hip forward. Chest lifts up high. Legs go down low. Left quad presses back to help you straighten the leg. Flip the front palm up, reach up and back, reverse warrior. Legs stay the same, but you're opening up that right side body. Windmill the hands down to the mat, come onto the ball of the back foot. Step back to plank pose, feet together, heels over to the left. Maybe you stack the feet, reach the right arm up. Maybe you hover the right foot low. Maybe you bend that top leg, reach back with the big toe of the right foot, lift up, right arm reaches up and over, wild thing. Use the glutes to press the hips up, lengthen through that right side body again. Side plank when you're ready, right arm up, feet together, hands to the mat, downward facing dog, left foot steps up between the hands, uh, reach the arms forward all the way up, crescent pose. Warrior two. Reverse warrior. Keep that reaching of the upper body in the same direction. Just turn the left toes in, right toes out, right forearm, right thigh, side angle pose. You could bring the hand down outside the foot if that's feeling good today. Look down at the mat, left hand to the mat, come onto the ball, the left foot, heel toe the right foot over to the right, step the left foot up between the hands, or yeah, inhale up halfway, exhale, full chair pose. Find the weight even in both legs, keep the chest lifted, all the way up to standing, hands come together down in front of the heart. Tadasana, arms down by the sides, Find your focal point, shift the weight over to the left foot, bend that right leg, lift the right foot, see if you can grab it with the right hand. Knees are side by side, 
hand, left hand, left hip, or reach that left arm up, up to you. Just stand tall, chest is lifted, lowest front ribs hug in, and keep the pelvis neutral. So pubic bone and tailbone are going toward one another. Gently release the right foot, both arms up, bend the knees, sit back, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, bend the knees, hands to the mat, any way you want, back to downward facing dog. Take your time. Right foot steps up between the hands. Set the back knee down. Scoot that left knee far back as you can. Right hand, right hip. Open the chest to the left. Maybe you bend that back leg. Reach for the foot. It might get easier each time. It might not. <laughs> Press the foot into the hand, the hand into the foot. So you straighten the arm. Then release that right hand back down to the mat, tuck the back toes. Maybe you hop that back foot in. If it's really far back, reach the arms back behind you, hover the chest low over the front thigh, take it up to crescent pose using both legs, reach the heart up. Warrior two. Inhale, straighten the front leg, palms touch overhead. Exhale, warrior two. Two more of those. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reach up. Stay here. Turn the right toes in, left toes out. Warrior two facing the back of the mat. Belly lifts, tail lowers. Flip the front palm up. Reach up and back, reverse warrior. And you can feel this length on the left side body. You need it for a wild thing. Windmill the hands down to the mat. Come onto the ball, the back foot. Step back to plank pose, feet together. Both heels over to the right. Left arm up. Welcome to stay in side plank or gently step that left big toe back behind you. Left arm up and over the ear. Lift the hips up, wild thing. Side plank. Plank, down dog. Right foot steps up between the hands, crescent. Warrior two. Reverse warrior. Turn those right toes in, left toes out, extended side angle, arm to thigh or hand outside the foot. This time right arm reaches up, so side angle pose. The palm of the right hand's facing forward. Then turn that palm to face behind you. Wrap the right arm behind the back. So you're coming into a half bind. If you feel like you're ready for a full bind, that hand can go inside the foot. It could go underneath the thigh. Maybe the hands connect. You see if it's there. If it's not, skip it. Left hand down, right arm up. Bring the hands down to the mat. Come onto the ball of the back foot. Right foot steps up to meet the left foot. Inhale up pathway. Exhale fold. Come back to chair pose. Bend the knees. Reach the arms up. Make sure the toes are light. Chest is lifted. Heavy in the legs. All the way up to standing, hands come together, down in front of the heart. Tadasana, find your focal point, try not to move the eyes, stay with your breath, shift the weight over to the right foot, bend the left leg, grab onto that left foot, reach the right arm up this time, get as long as you can, so you're standing as tall as you can without puffing out those lowest front ribs. You could take a mudra, that right index finger can connect with the and uh, with the padding of the thumb. Stay looking forward, press the left foot into the left hand, inner left thigh spinning back behind you, reach forward, keep pressing that left foot into the left hand, 
dancer's pose. Right leg is strong, foot can lift, gazes forward. Come back up to standing, take your time, try to keep it as steady as possible. Left foot comes down to the mat, both arms reach up, bend the knees, Ukatasana chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Hands down to the mat, step back to plank pose. Make your way back, downward facing dog with or without a vinyasa. Right away, left foot steps up between the hands. Set the back knee onto the mat. Scoot that right knee as far back as you can. Left hand, left hip, open the chest to the left. Maybe reach back, grab for the foot. Gently let that foot go. Left hand comes back down to the mat. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. You may need to hop that back foot in a little bit. Arms reach back behind you alongside the body. Rise up, crescent pose. Warrior two. Inhale, arms up overhead, straighten the front leg. Two more, exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, warrior two. This time, inhale, reach up, stay up, turn those left toes in, right toes out, warrior two, back of the mat. Flip the front palm up, reach up and back, reverse warrior, focus on that right side body, find that opening here. Windmill the hands down to the mat, stepping back to plank pose. Feet together, both heels over to the left, right arm reaches up, side plank. Maybe we step that right big toe back behind us, lift the hips up, right arm can go up and overhead. Side plank if you took it. Right hand back down to the mat, plank pose. Downward facing dog, left foot steps up between the hands, runner's lunge, take it up to crescent pose. Warrior two. Reverse warrior. Left toes go in, right toes go out, extended side angle, maybe right hand inside the foot. You could stick with forearm to thigh if you want to. Left arm reaches up, side angle pose. Turn that left palm to face behind you. Wrap the left arm behind the back. Keep that lunge in the front knee. If it's available, you could take the full bind, see what happens. And release the right hand back down outside the foot. Left arm reaches up. Bring that left hand down to the mat. Come onto the ball, the back foot. Left foot steps up to meet the right foot. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Chair pose. Couple of breaths here. This is how we start to gain our stability. Come all the way back up to standing. Hands come together down in front of the heart. Arms down by the sides, shift the weight over to the left foot, bend the right leg, see if you can grab onto the right foot. Left arm can reach up. So just start here, get as tall as you can, fire up that left leg, make sure that left inner thigh is working. It's like spinning back behind you. Maybe index finger and thumb together. Look straight forward the whole time. Press the right foot into the right hand, start to lean forward almost like you have a bow in that left hand and you're pointing it forward. Grabbing the outer edge of that right foot is uh, the easiest for the right shoulder. Inside edge of the foot is way harder on that shoulder. You find where your challenge is. Right inner thigh spinning back behind you. Try not to open up that right knee. Slowly come back up to standing. 
right back to where you were. Stay, same focal point as before. Right foot comes down to the mat, right arm reaches up, bend the knees, sit back, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, hands down to the mat, make your way back, downward facing dog. Right foot steps up between the hands, set the back knee down, right hand, right hip, open the chest to the side, bend that left leg, reach back, grab for the foot. So we're just going to do this one more time now that we know where we're going. Sometimes it's nice to go back into those bigger poses after you know what, when it's coming next, gently release that left foot, bring the hand down to the mat, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, maybe shorten the stance, arms reach alongside the body all the way up, crescent pose, open it up, warrior two, inhale, lift, arms touch overhead, exhale, warrior two, inhale, reach up, Exhale, warrior two. Last one, inhale, reach up. Turn those right toes in, angle the left toes out. Warrior two facing the back of the mat. Flip the front palm up, reverse warrior. Hands come down to the mat. Come onto the ball of the back foot. Step back to plank pose. Feet go over to the right, left arm reaches up, start with side plank, stay here or step the left foot back, reach that left arm up and over the head. Side plank, plank, down dog. Right foot steps up between the hands, feet hip width, crescent. Warrior two. Reverse warrior, angle in the right toes, turn the left toes all the way out, maybe left hand inside the foot, right arm reaches up and over, extended side angle, then take it to side angle, right arm reaches up, palm faces behind you, maybe the half bind, maybe the full bind. Left hand comes down outside the foot, right arm reaches up, bring the right hand down to the mat, come onto the ball of the back foot, right foot steps up to meet the left foot, inhale up halfway, exhale fold, chair pose. All the way up to standing, hands come together, down in front of the heart. Tadasana, arms down by the sides, Shift the weight over to the right foot, bend the left leg, see if you can grab the foot. Right arm reaches up. Index finger and thumb together. Look straight forward. Oh, you could switch the grip if you feel like the shoulders are opening up and grab the inner edge of the foot. Stay with the outer edge if that's better. Press the foot into the hand, the hand into the foot. Start to reach the heart forward. Lift that left inner thigh up toward the sky. Dancer's pose. Back up to standing nice and slow so you don't have momentum taking your balance off. Set the left foot down, right left arm up, bend the knees, sit back, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Hands to the mat, make your way back, downward facing dog with or without a vinyasa. Left foot steps up between the hands. Right knee comes down to the mat, scoot it back. Left hand, left hip, open the chest to the side. Maybe bend that back leg, reach for the foot. Release that foot. Left hand comes back down to the mat. Tuck the back toes. You might need to hop the back foot in. Reach the arms back behind you. Chest is reaching forward. Now crescent pose, dig into that left heel, arms reach up. Warrior two. Inhale, straighten the front leg, palms together overhead. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reach up. 
Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reach up, turn the left toes in, angle the right toes out, warrior two. Flip the front palm up, reverse warrior. Hands come down to the mat, step back to plank pose, feet together, bring the heels over to the left, right arm reaches up, side plank or wild thing. Right toes steps back, lift the hips, right arm up and over. Right arm reaches up, side plank to plank pose, downward facing dog, left foot up between the hands, crescent pose. Warrior two, reverse warrior. Left toes in, right toes out, extended side angle, maybe hand inside the foot. You could definitely use a block. Left arm reaches up, turn that palm to face behind you, half bind or full. Release the arms, right hand outside the right foot. Left hand comes down to the mat. Come onto the ball, the back foot. Left foot steps up to meet the right. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Chair pose, bend the knees, reach the arms up. All the way up to standing. Hands come together down in front of the heart. This is it, Tadasana, mountain pose. Shift the weight over to the left foot. Bend that right knee, reach back, grab for the foot, outer edge of the foot or inner edge. Left arm reaches up. Maybe what you did on the first side, if the shoulder's okay with it, index finger and thumb together. Look straight forward, lift from that inner right thigh, press the foot into the hand, the hand back into the foot, core hugs in. Tailbone and pubic bone going toward one another. Back up to standing as slow as you can so you stay steady. Right foot comes down, right arm reaches up, bend the knees, sit back, Utkatasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up halfway. Hands down to the mat, last vinyasa if you want it on the way back to downward facing dog. Take a deep breath and downward facing dog in through the nose. On the exhale, side out the mouth. Bring the knees down to the mat. Bring the chest and the chin down to the mat. So you're lifting the hips up high. Then glide forward onto your stomach, tops of the feet down. Just stack the hands, one hand on top of the other, rest the forehead on top of the hands. If that's uncomfortable for whatever reason, you can turn the head to one side, arms down by the sides. It's the same thing. Okay, lift the head up. Reach the arms back behind you, palms face one another. Hover the feet away from the mat just a little bit. So you want to feel like you're getting length in the legs. Reach the chest forward. Keep this strength in the legs. You could start to bend the legs, reach back, see if you can grab the feet, then press the feet into the hands, lift up. Dhanurasana. Gently set the thighs down, rest the feet, turn the head to the other side or rest the head on top of the hands. Kind of hard not to do that pose with this practice. We've been playing with grabbing the feet the whole time and that's a big back bend. It's not always available, but it could be a little bit easier today or maybe more accessible is the best word for it. All right, reach the arms back behind you, palms face one another, hover the feet, lift and spread the chest. With strength, bend the legs, reach back, grab the tops of the feet or ankles, lift up. Chest lifts, legs lift. And slowly release, let that go. Rest. 
From here, you can lift the feet, move the feet side to side like windshield wipers. Might be a nice way to release the lower back. Then set the feet back down, lift the head up, get the forearms underneath you, just like Sphinx pose. But you'll bring that left hand back behind the right arms, stretch that left arm underneath you, right knee comes out to the side, inner edge of the foot down on the mat, reach that right arm up and back behind you, coming into a, a reclined spinal twist. So that right knee's forward, right shoulders coming down toward the mat, and you're looking over the right arm. So we, we did a version of this when we first started. We just came third of the way into it. So now you're warm. You've done lots of back bends, some twists. We're using this twist to release all the back bends. And right arm comes back over to the left arm. Stretch that right leg back behind you, come back up onto the forearms and you'll switch sides. Right hand goes behind the left arm, reach that uh, right arm forward. Left knee comes outside of the hip, inner edge of the foot down on the mat. Reach that left arm up and back, opening up into your spinal twist. Maybe the gaze goes over the left hand. And what's nice about this one is it's easier to get on the side of the right hip for it. You want the head, the right hip and the right foot to be in one line. Left hand comes over to the right. Bring that left leg back behind you, coming back up onto the forearms. This time, bring the hands to the mat, come up to hands and knees, take child's pose. Big toes together, sit the hips back, reach the arms out in front of you, forehead down. Or you could bring the arms back behind you. Your shoulders have had plenty of opening today, lots of strengthening. So it might be a nice way to rest them at this point, coming into the end of your practice. Bring the hands down to the mat, lift the head, bring the feet over to one side, find a seat on your mat, legs out in front of you. You might need to scoot yourself forward so that when you lie down onto your back, your head's still on the mat. Bring the knees in toward the chest, you can rock side to side. Then take happy baby, open up the knees wide. You can grab onto the backs of the thighs, calves, ankles, feet, but move those hips down toward the mat, try not to let the tail curl up and then pull back on whatever you have, getting the knees wider than the torso if you can. Maybe you rock side to side. Bring the knees in toward the chest, close the eyes, take a big inhale in through the nose. Exhale, Shavasana, extend the legs out in front of you, toes turn out, feet can be a little wider than hip width, lift the chest, get the shoulder blades underneath you, rest.
Start to wiggle the fingers and the toes. Stretch the arms overhead. Reach out through the legs, getting long in your body. Walk the feet in, bend the knees. Roll over to your right side. Cradle the head and the arm. Keep the eyes closed if you can. Just lying in the fetal position. Feeling everything shift from being on your back to being on your side. Then using the hands, bring yourself up to a comfortable seat. Sitting up as tall as you can. Eyes still closed. Bring the hands together in front of you. Keep that lift of the chest. Slightly bow the head. Take a moment, honor and acknowledge your heart and your spirit. That's why we move. So we feel more centered and in touch with ourselves. And then take that and honor everyone else around you, all living beings. Bring the head back up, blink open the eyes. Namaste. Thanks so much. So today we did a lot of back bends. I didn't get the best night of sleep last night because of the two cats that live with me. And what helps me in, in when I don't get enough sleep and I'm tired and groggy is doing a dynamic flow. So more movement and then also back bends because that brings energy into the body. All right. Hope you had a good practice. I'll see you next time.